Hello, my name is Kimberly Oswalt, and I am a registered dietitian with Kettering Health Network, Community Outreach Department. Today, we are talking all about hydration. Are you getting enough? On average, 60% of the human body is made up of water. Naturally, adults lose 10 cups of fluid every day just from breathing, toileting, and sweating. 7% of adults don't drink any water each day, and almost 43% of adults don't drink enough water. We've heard that it's wise to drink eight glasses of water each day. However, there's not a lot of research to back that up. The National Academy of Medicine actually recommends that women get nine cups of fluid each day and that men get 12 and a half cups of fluid each day. And this is coming from all beverages, including water, milk, coffee, tea, and juice. This doesn't include the fluid that we're getting from foods that we eat. So foods that we eat provide about 20% of our fluid needs especially foods that are higher in water content, like fruits and vegetables. Staying hydrated has many benefits. It helps keep our skin moisturized. It also helps to control food cravings. If you feel a food craving coming on, you might try drinking a glass of water, and that might just help that craving subside. Staying hydrated can also improve your mood. Just like when we're hungry and we start to feel irritable, when we're dehydrated or thirsty, we can also feel irritable. Staying hydrated improves our metabolism. Just by being slightly dehydrated, we can decrease our metabolism by about 3%. Staying hydrated can also control our blood pressure and it can lubricate and cushion our joints. Staying hydrated can also help prevent fatigue. Dehydration is the number one cause for midday fatigue. Staying hydrated can also help regulate our body temperature, and it also promotes good urinary and digestive health. We can eliminate some of those waste toxins through our urine and stool, which can help keep us nice and healthy. So what can affect our hydration? Extreme weather conditions, whether it's very hot outside or humid, even when there's extremely cold weather, or if you're at a higher altitude, these can all require an increase in your fluid requirements. Physical activity. The more active you are and the longer you're active, the more fluid you will require. Body size. Typically, the more we weigh, the higher our fluid intake. Additionally, men tend to require more fluid than women. Health conditions. When we're ill, especially when we have a fever or if we're vomiting or have diarrhea, we're going to require more fluid to replace those losses. Also, some medical conditions like kidney disease, diabetes, as well as congestive heart failure may have differing fluid requirements. It's always a good idea to check with your healthcare practitioner to make sure that you're getting the amount of fluid for you. Age. Very young children often can't communicate when they're thirsty to us. And so very young children are more prone to dehydration. Also, older adults tend to be more prone to dehydration as well, because as we get older, our sense of thirst decreases. Also, during pregnancy and breastfeeding, the requirements for fluid will also increase. So are you properly hydrated? We can't go by thirst as a good indicator as to whether we're hydrated or not. Looking at the color of our urine is a very good way to tell if we are adequately hydrated. Ultimately, we want our urine to be lemonade or straw-like in color, and that indicates that we're adequately hydrated. If it starts to look more the color of apple juice or even darker, then you are likely dehydrated. And it's also important to note that some vitamins can actually cause our urine to become bright yellow. Some symptoms of dehydration. If you're mildly or moderately dehydrated, you might experience headache, fatigue, irritability, a decrease in urine output, dry mouth, you might have a slightly increased heart rate, and you may experience muscle cramps as well. As dehydration gets more severe, you will also experience more severe symptoms. So we want to definitely avoid becoming dehydrated. There are so many beverages out there to choose from, but not all beverages are created equal. Water. 
water is going to be the best choice for staying hydrated. It's calorie free, it doesn't contain any sugar, it's caffeine free, it's very inexpensive, and it's usually readily accessible. So water is going to be the perfect choice. There's also a number of other types of water out there. There's sparkling water, flavored water, vitamin water, and even alkaline water. Sparkling, flavored, or vitamin waters will sometimes have added sugar or other additives, so that might be something to pay attention to. Sparkling water also tends to be a little bit more acidic, and so that's something that we don't want to consume throughout the entire day. We don't want to sip on that all day long. It's best to really have that maybe with a meal because that high acid content can actually start to erode or destroy the enamel on our teeth. So it's okay, but we want to make sure it's kind of in one sitting. Vitamin water. Vitamin water sounds like a good choice. It does have added vitamins. However, there's often a lot of added sugar in vitamin water. So in this one bottle of vitamin water, there's about six and a half teaspoons of added sugar. And we'll talk in a minute about what the recommendation is for keeping our added sugar limit to. Alkaline water is also very trendy right now. However, the body actually does a really good job at adjusting its pH. So there's not really much research to show the benefits of drinking alkaline water. There's also milk. Milk can contribute to our hydration needs as well. The goal is to choose low fat or fat-free or skim milk when possible. If you don't drink milk or choose those non-dairy alternatives such as soy milk or almond milk, again, keep a close eye on the added sugar because it can add up over time. There's also juice. So juice can contribute towards our hydration, but it also tends to be a little higher in sugar. It's always better to eat the whole fruit as opposed to drinking the juice. In this one 14 ounce bottle of orange juice, there's about 10 teaspoons of sugar. So definitely choose the whole fruit over the juice when possible. And if you do choose juice, try to limit your portions to about four ounces or less each day. Juice could also be used to add a little bit of a splash of flavor to plain water. Some people like to do that to help increase their intake. Next, we're gonna talk about sugary beverages. Sugar sweetened beverages are one of the biggest sources of added sugar in the American diet. So for men, the recommendation is to limit added sugar to no more than nine teaspoons per day. For women, we wanna limit added sugar to no more than six teaspoons per day. In this one 20 ounce bottle of Mountain Dew, there's 19 teaspoons of added sugar. That's two to three days worth of added sugar just from this one beverage alone, not counting other sources of fluids or foods that might contribute to our added sugar intake. Next is sports drinks. Sports drinks are a good option for athletes or those who are active moderately or vigorously active for an hour or more. Otherwise, if you're just drinking this during the day or with a meal, it can add salt and sugar to your diet that we don't necessarily need. So again, in this one Gatorade bottle, there's about nine teaspoons of added sugar. And there's also calories that will get added to your diet as well. Next, we have caffeinated drinks, coffee, tea, and energy drinks. We wanna keep our caffeine intake moderate, which is defined as less than 400 milligrams over the course of a day. To give an example of what that would look like, that's usually about four cups of coffee, depending on how the coffee was brewed or prepared. So in this Starbucks Venti Blonde Roast, there's 470, approximately 475 milligrams of caffeine. So that would be more than your daily allotment. Energy drinks also will contain caffeine and sometimes will also contain added sugar. In this one energy drink, there's 13 and a half teaspoons of added sugar and about 160 milligrams of caffeine. So the caffeine and sugar content can vary among energy drinks, but it's always better to get our energy from natural sources like getting adequate rest when possible. Caffeinated beverages can contribute to our hydration needs. 
as long as the caffeine content isn't excessive or over 400 milligrams, approximately 400 milligrams over the course of the day. Since alcoholic drinks or beverages are dehydrating, it's always a good idea if you choose to drink alcohol to have a drink of water or a glass of water in between alcoholic beverages. And we wanna definitely keep our intake of alcohol moderate if you choose to drink. A moderate intake of alcohol for men is defined as no more than two drinks per day, and for women is no more than one drink per day. Let's talk about some tips for how you can stay hydrated. One of the reasons why people don't tend to drink enough water is because water isn't always accessible to them. One of the best ways to make sure it's always accessible is to carry a water bottle with you. Reusable water bottles are fantastic. And there's also reusable straws now that you can use as well if you tend to drink more water by using a straw. There are also marked water bottles that have the time of the day and the level of water intake that you should be at for the day. That can be a good way to monitor your progress. Another way to monitor your progress is by using a clear water bottle. A clear water bottle allows you to see how much you've drank throughout the day Whereas if you're using an opaque water bottle, you may forget to drink. You may not realize that you only took a couple sips out of your water bottle that day. Another reason why people don't tend to drink water is because it tends to be flavorless or boring. And so spruce up your water, add fruits or vegetables or herbs to your water. Some herbs that I like to add are mint or basil. Fruit like citrus or berries works great and vegetables like cucumbers adds a nice refreshing taste. I personally love to use frozen fruit. It's very easy. You don't have to wash or prep the fruit. You just scoop it out of the bag, throw it in your water bottle and add the water. And it also adds a nice chill to your water as well. Another reason why people don't tend to drink enough water is because we forget. We often don't have reminders. So perhaps utilizing your phone to set a reminder or there are a number of apps for your phone that you can use to help remind you throughout the day to drink. Also, just using paper and pencil to jot down and keep track of how much water you've had that day. Tracking your intake and setting goals for yourself. So maybe you have a goal to increase your water by one glass more than you had the previous day. Or perhaps you drink water in place of soda. Or when you go to dine out, you choose water instead of another beverage. Not only will that save you calories, but it will also save you money as well. Remembering to reward yourself when you meet your goals can be encouraging as well. So maybe you go out and you buy yourself a new water bottle so that you can continue to stay hydrated. Putting these simple tips into practice can not only help you meet your hydration goals, but can help you look and feel your absolute best.